The Deutsch Zoser algorithm considers itself with the same problem of Deutsch's algorithm, trying to find out if a function, f, is constant or balanced. But instead of the function accepting one bit as an input, like in Deutsch's algorithm, the Deutsch Zoser algorithm is a general case that accepts any number of bits as input and still outputs one bit. If a function is constant, then for all inputs it returns the same output. That is, f of x is equal to 0 for all bit strings of x, or f of x is equal to 1 for all bit strings of x. Balanced functions, on the other hand, return 0 for half of the inputs and 1 for the other half of the inputs. In other words, the number of x's where f of x is equal to 0 is equal to the number of x's where f of x is equal to 1. For a classical computer to solve this problem, we need to query the oracle at worst 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 times. Since there are 2 to the n possible inputs, 2 to the power of n minus 1 is half the number of possible inputs, and in the worst case scenario, we may input half the possible inputs and receive the same output for all of them, meaning that we must query the oracle one more time to confirm if the function is constant or balanced. If we get the same value, the function is constant, whereas if we get a different value, the function is balanced. This gives us a big O complexity of 2 to the power of n. With quantum computers, however, we only need one query of the function to find out if it's constant or balanced, giving us exponential speed up. Here is a circuit for the algorithm. Let's label different parts of the algorithm with psi so that we can keep track of where we are in the circuit. Initially, the state is n zeros minus. We can rewrite the n zeros as this, which means zero tends to with itself n times, giving us this state. Then at psi sub 1, we apply a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits in the first register. If we expand them out, then we have 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, tensed with 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, and so on, n times. So that we can come up with an equation for this part of the state, let's try different values of n to find out how we can represent it. If we have n equals 2, so the plus plus state, and we expand it out, it becomes 1 over root 2 squared, 0, 0, plus 0, 1, plus 1, 0, plus 1, 1. If we have n equals 3, we get plus, plus, plus. If we once again expand this out, we get this. In the case where n equals 2, it equals 1 over 2 times the sum over all possible x's that are bit strings of length 2, x. We can do the same thing for n equals 3. Generalizing these findings, we can see that applying Hadamard's to a register of n zeros gives us the equation 1 over root 2 to the power of n times by the sum of all x's that are bit strings of length n, x. Intuitively, this makes sense, since each qubit has an equal chance of being 0 or 1, so every possible combination of zeros and 1s can occur, and have an equal probability of occurring. Thus, we can represent psi 1 as 1 over the square root of 2 to the power of n, times the sum over all x, where x is a bit string of length n, x. At psi sub 2, we apply the oracle. Since the input is in a superposition, the unitary matrix u of f, acting as the function, gets distributed into the sum. Now, if we look at each of the superposition states in the sum, each of them has n bits as input, and the minus state as output. With that, we can see that each state in the sum is in the phase oracle form. So when we apply the oracle, we get phase kickback. Let's omit the minus qubit, since it is not needed for the rest of the algorithm. We now apply a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits. What this means is that for every bit in x, since x is a bit string length n, a Hadamard gate is applied. You might be thinking we could use the other formula that we used at the start of the algorithm. But that one is for Hadamards that are applied to all zeros. We don't know what x is. It could contain all zeros, both zeros and ones, or all ones. To find out how we can write this transformation, let's rewrite the Hadamard transform on an arbitrary bit xi as 1 over root 2, 0 plus negative 1 to the power of xi, 1. Since if xi is equal to 0, then it becomes 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1. And if xi is equal to 1, then it becomes 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1. 
If we have the state x, which is a bit string of length 3, applying a Hadamard to each of the two qubits and expanding leaves us with this equation. Let's quickly clean up this equation by adding the exponents. As you can see, whenever there is a 1 in the state, negative 1 to the power of xi is times by that state, where i is the position of the 1. If we think about it, this is when both x and the new superposition created by the Hadamards have a 1 in the same position. We can rewrite the exponents as the dot product of x with the superposition state. We can now rewrite the entire expression as a sum over all z's. Negative 1 to the power of the dot product of x and z, z. Intuitively, this makes sense, as at an arbitrary position i, both xi and zi must be 1 in order for a factor of negative 1 to be applied to that state, which matches up with the expansion we did earlier. This identity is very important and used in a lot of quantum algorithms. Now, the qubits are in this state. Let's consider the amplitude of the all zeros state. By expanding out the equation, we find that it is 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x's, negative 1 to the power of f of x plus the dot product of x with n zeros. Since the dot product with all zeros equals 0, the exponent of negative 1 becomes f of x. Now let's consider two different scenarios. If f of x is constant, then for all x's, f of x will always be the same value. So the amplitude of the all zero state if f of x is equal to zero is 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x's that are bit strings of length n, 1. If we solve the sum, since there are 2 to the power of n possible combinations of x, the sum becomes 2 to the power of n. The 1 over 2 to the power of n and 2 to the power of n cancel, leaving us with just 1. If f of x is equal to 1, on the other hand, we do the same thing, leaving us instead with 1 over 2 to the power of n times by negative 2 to the power of n. Simplifying, it becomes negative 1. Combining these two, if the function is constant, then the amplitude of the all zero state is plus or minus 1. This means that if the function is constant, the probability of measuring all zeros is 1. On the other hand, if the function is balanced, then if we look at the sum, half of the f of x's will be 0 and the other half 1, meaning that the sum will be 0 when evaluated, as there will be the same number of negative ones as 1's adding together. So if the function is balanced, then the amplitude of the all zero state is 0. Therefore, if we measure all zeros, then the function is constant, but if we measure at least one one, then the function is balanced. And we are done. We have found out if f is constant or balanced in one query of the function. This is an exponential speed up over classical computers. From here, I would recommend learning the bernstein vezzarani algorithm, as it uses the same process of applying a wall of Hadamards, then querying the oracle, and once again applying a wall of Hadamards but this time to find a secret bit string.